Hello again everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to my channel. This will be part two of the Green Highlander 3.0. Um, this is supplied by the kits that I have here. So all the materials here are used from this. In video one, we covered the body and uh, worked our way through from the tail all the way up to the throat. In this video, we will work with the underwing marrying the main wing, putting on our sides, cheeks, roof, and topping. So, get, so let's jump right into it. Let's grab your underwing, which is your golden pheasant, tip it. As you can see here, I've got them it up already. Now these tippets can be a little bit, um, they can be interesting to work with. The important thing is getting them to stay together and getting the right length on the rackets. So, when you're tying your tippets in, all right, you want to get them paired up so that way they're front to back. And then when you tie it in, you want to have it so the bars line up with the butt and the wood duck. See how those line up just like that? That's how you want it. So, when you tie it in, What we're actually going to do here is I flip these so the orientation on these is slightly different and what's, what that does is it's giving a little bit more curve underneath. As you can see there and what that does that allows for that curve to get around some of the body materials. You know the this little hump here and so first we'll go through and I just want to straighten these out just a little bit so they're not so curvy so you see right here there's a little bit of a curve to it just very gently use our thumbnail to straighten that out a little In doing that, we'll also strip away this fluff, the stuff that doesn't have any bars on it. That's not necessary. There's one. And the other. Okay, the other thing you want to do is use a pair of tweezers and right where you're going to tie it in, measure it out and see right where you're going to tie it in will be about here. You want to flatten this down so that way it's horizontally flat. So when you mount it onto the, the hook, it's got a little flat spot for the thread to, to rest in. Otherwise, these could roll around and they become a pain in the butt. So, just like that, flatten these out. Get them back together. Now 
Now you're going to see here in just a second, when you tie that on, it's going to jump those up like that. Uh, that's because of this, this little hump here made by your dubbing and your hackle. So what we do is just put a little crease there. Crease it right here. And then again right before where it mounts in. I'll also throw a little wax on this thread. Okay, I'm putting a couple extra wraps up here, and that's going to help thicken that up a bit. And I'll just make sure that that step isn't so bad. A couple extra stragglers. A couple troublemakers. Get them out of the way. Back to our tippets. to just set them right in. Okay, still needs a little bit more. And just take your time with these. They can be a little on the finicky side and just work your way around the, the stalk and the rackets in the front. And right here. Use your tweezers. And just grab the stem. Pull it towards you a little bit. Get these lined up. There's our underwing.
Now we're ready to build the main wing. The main wing is a married wing. I've supplied all the sections for it, so you can pull up the bag. It says main wing. Got all your components here. So there's some golden pheasant tail, orange, yellow, and green goose shoulder, and then some dyed, and then some uh, natural turkey tail. With the turkey tail, we're going to be using the longer barbs. Okay. I need to build both wings. You'll need to switch to a flatter surface. I uh, usually have Pardon me. Okay, so to marry our wing, we've got goose shoulder, turkey tail, and golden pheasant. Now the order they go in, it's yellow, orange, green, turkey tail, and then the golden pheasant. If you want, you can get a little bit fancy. Uh, you can put a little bit of the turkey tail in between the yellow, the orange, and the green. Um, you can make up different sections, you can um, mix up the wing however you really like. But we're going to go with the easier, more traditional way. So now the, the goose shoulder that I've supplied is side specific. They're all side specific, but the goose shoulder we can use both sides. The turkey we're going to use the longer side, same with the golden pheasant. So. We'll start on the outside wing first. I've supplied a little bit of extra on each of these, uh, so that way you can make up the size of the wing that you kind of like. You can have a larger wing, which if you use all of it, you would. Um, in my opinion, it would be a bit too big for this hook, uh, but you can give it a try. So we'll just go ahead and just snip these off of this side. And using your dubbing needle, run about half of those, so about four of them. Should be eight or nine barbs for each color. Same with the orange. I'm going to just put those together really quick. And if you look at the tips, right, the tips have an angle to them. That's the natural angle of the feather. And as you cut them off of the feather, they've got an upward curve. To create your wing, you actually need to reverse that curve. So by coaxing these down a little bit, and just a little bit at a time, you change the curvature of those feather barbs. So they no longer curve up, but down. Okay. Let's see if I can zoom in a little for you. And then the tips have that natural angle. You want to keep that natural angle. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to change that. You don't want to eliminate it or make it too long. So when you're mounting the orange to the yellow. You want to do it so the orange just barely overlaps the yellow like so.
and just touch those sides together. And if they don't really want to cooperate, just play around with them a little bit. Now, if you see that right there, that doesn't quite look right to me. So I'm going to change that a little bit. Just take it back off. Separate them again. And then mount them back together. You want these tips in the front to matter. Doesn't matter how long it is over here, you're going to cut all that off anyway later. With goose, some of these tips get real fuzzy. So you can do is you can use your thumbnail and just break off a little bit of that fuzz. Not too much of it that it's very noticeable. But you definitely don't want to take scissors to it. A, a scissors creates a definite um, mark on there that's very, very recognizable. Takes away from the aesthetics of the fly. Okay, then when orange is done, put the green on there. turkey Turkey should marry right in nicely. And then we'll take our golden pheasant. Golden pheasant has a tendency to be a little bit more finicky. When working with it, the, uh, the little, I don't know what they're called, uh, fiberettes maybe? Um, the little pieces that help Velcro to the feathers together. Um, they're a little bit thinner on golden pheasant tail, so they're a little bit more finicky to, to play with, and they don't quite marry up as well. They don't hold on as long or as, as good as the uh, some of the other ones. And if you get oils on your fingers, like I just did, on dirty hands. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so now look closer. See that break in there? The second one down is broken. So, that's no good. You can't use that. So what we're gonna do, since I gave you a little extra, we're gonna take these four off and use this other four. Well, some of you, I'm, I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, don't have broken ones. Um, I didn't catch that when I packed the bag. But this just shows you what we can do instead. Okay, so there's our left wing, or the one that will be facing us when we mount it. And now for the right wing.
some of you may have also been blessed with uh, a few dog hairs from my Australian Shepherds. Sorry about that. Can't help but get their stuff into everything. Okay, just about got these married up. <clears throat> okay, so there's our inner wing for the other side. All right, now that we have our wing married, let's take our wing. Let's get them lined up perfectly front to back. <clears throat> I apologize if you hear a popping noise. I have supplemental oxygen and it's playing with my nose. Okay, so we get our wings lined up. You can take these and kind of slide them back and forth, see that? And get them lined up good. And it'll make like a little, kind of like a little boat under there, see that? And what you want to have for a shape, you want to kind of bend this down a little more in the front where you'll be tying in. 
and then towards the back like that. Now, making that little boat shape with your fingers and take this and you're going to set it right down over the top of the golden pheasant. And when you do that, it's okay if it splits them like that. But when you do that, get them down to the fly and very gently hold them with your left hand. Or your opposite hand, I should say. I think I'm assuming most tires tie in this direction. So, and you want to line it up. Make sure your tips back here are good and they're lined up with the tip of the tail where you want it. You can line it up with the tip of the tail. You can be a little shy of it. I like to get as close to the tip as possible lengthwise. We can mess with actually shaping it later once we've got it tied in good enough. Once it's tied in even, then the rest of it we can play with. I'll show you that in a minute. So once you've got them all lined up good, tips are even, everything's in place, drop it down over the golden pheasant, and then you're going to Pinch it here, hold it still with this finger. Don't let anything really give except at the very tip here. Push that down just a bit so it starts to compress like that. And then do one. Well, before you do that, when you start to compress it, um, tip it towards you a little bit. Take this and rotate it towards you just a hair just a hair like that because when you do your first wrap it's going to want to pull that backwards it's going to want to rotate back see how it's already starting to pull it back so with the bobbin hanging just use the the weight of the bobbin now you can take these fibers that are getting pulled and pull them back over again all the while holding it very still on this side. Don't let anything move there. And then pull down again and make your second wrap. Don't pull it too tight, just snug. Rotate it back again towards you. Then start pulling a little tighter. Rotate it back towards you again. A little tighter. And then wrap number three. That should have you about where you need to be. So then you can go ahead and let go with your left hand. And you should have something similar to this. And this is where I said we'd, we could play with things a little bit. Now we have to make a few adjustments. Yours may look a little bit better. Yours may not have that that to it, but uh, look at the back side. Okay, if you look at the back side here, the yellow is tucking in underneath, and on the front side, everything else is tucking behind the yellow. So those are adjustments we need to make. So we're going to go ahead back to and pinch it right where it was before. Pinch it here and unwind completely. Go all the way off. And then just readjust a little bit. Make sure everything's lined up again. Wrap number one. Two. That's better, much better. Okay, if you're at this point, 
another drop of head cement. I'm just using uh, a Wopsy fly head cement. It's very, very thin. So it really leaches in pretty well. Let that soak in for a minute. All right, while that's soaking in, what we're going to do now is just make sure that we are happy with the shape of our, our wing and our underwing. Okay, so you see here, the underwing's kind of poking through the top a little bit. Some people don't mind that look. Personally, I, I like to have the nice clean wing on the top without anything poking through. So what we can do, as you see how it's parted there, we can just slip our scissors in very gently and very gently snip off a few fibers. save that. I just noticed my rear wing is much shorter than my front and I don't think I can. The head cement on there, it's uh, maybe too late for me. Well, my top of my wing is missing a strip now. Okay, that's better. Much better. All right. Back to sacrilege. You could also um, trim off or uh, strip off some of that before you even mount the underwing. If you know it's going to be tall and it's a larger feather. All right, so from here, now we need to tie in our sides, jungle cock, roof, and topping. First, you wanna make sure you've got a nice, good tie-in point right here with not much obstruction, like right on this side here, these hackle fibers are gonna get in the way a bit. So you wanna make sure that they're either pulled out of the way or stripped off. First, we'll grab our jungle cock eyes, which I've picked out and paired up. I'm 
And you see that they both have a curve to them. See? You want that curve to go on the fly on the side that you're facing. You want it to have a nice natural curve with the rest of it. So this one curve this way and go right here. So we'll line it up where we want it. I think that's about right. So we'll strip away all this, most of this fluff actually. Let's strip away the fluff back here, but we'll leave Just this little bit right here that we're going to clip. And if we trim that, again, that'll give you a little bit more of something to tie to. Jungle cock can get kind of finicky and roll a little bit. The, uh, the rack is a bit off shape and can sometimes be difficult. Not always, but sometimes. So I'm going to use just one wrap to snug it in. And then we'll go to the other side. You want to line this one up to be the same length as the other. So, same deal. Strip away most of the fuzz. And then trim away the rest. And now you can use your tweezers to line it up better. Next, you can grab your sides, your green wing teal and your wood duck. Now these are, you kind of have to marry these a little bit. Wood duck and teal are, like I said earlier about the wood duck, they're very, um, very finer uh, barbed. So when you're putting these together, they don't play as nice as say goose or turkey or or anything like that so same thing with these just like you do with the wing see the wood duck here has a natural curvature as it comes off of the feather you're gonna reverse that that curvature but you want to keep this angle here on it so, you're basically going to, this is actually a little bit thick. There's a little, a lot, that's a lot of wood duck. So, some of these uh, may have a little bit more than others, um, but generally, I'm going to clip some of this away and show you how much there should be. It should actually be about half the thickness of this uh, jungle cock feather. You don't want to strip away that rackets though. You want to leave that on there and I'll show you why. There, that's a little better. Wood duck and teal, they don't like to play nice, so like I said with the tail, you're going to try to leave that center rachis on there as long as you can. That'll help you with lining it up and keeping it from coming apart too much. Same thing with the teal. The teal, is a little, this one's a little bit thick.
the teal should should ride underneath the wood duck. So when you marry them together, you can still marry them together and keep these rexes kind of touching. It should still work. Come on now. Okay. There we go. So we're going to take that go right over the top of that jungle cock, right? Like this. And do one nice loose thread wrap over that. Actually, before we do that, let's put a little bit more wax on that thread. Wax is kind of a important part of this process. And teal. And let's take those and almost like it's veiling right over the top of that jungle cock. I want to do one loose thread wrap to snug it in. That's a little bit short, so. That can also be his personal preference, though. The length of the wood duck and the teal. Okay. This right here is why I wanted to leave that on there, because if this is out of place, you can use these to adjust it. And if you have to take it off, that'll keep your, all your fibers in line. All right, now the jungle cock is sitting too high. We want that to come down out from behind that. I'm just doing this off camera really quickly. Okay. Finish marrying these up here. spent a lot of time and tied a lot of flies doing it differently without leaving these brackets tags on here and I found that it was like lo fighting a losing battle I would mess up so many sides screw up so much wood duck and so much teal and 
And just like you, I went to YouTube and seen a couple of guys that did it that way, leaving that on there. And that made more sense to me. And um, I've been able to tie a little bit better because of it. And once again, we'll just lay that on there. Now on the back side, it's a little bit harder to line it up. So, I think it's just the angle of it. So you just use your tweezers to kind of coax it back into place. And same thing happened. The jungle cock wanted to ride up. So we'll pull that down a little. Let's see what's happening here. It's all getting pushed out of the way by this uh, lump. There we go. That's better. All I'm doing here is just just make moving these hackle fibers a little bit so that way they take the shape more of a curve that I want. Not hackle, I'm sorry. The uh, duck barbs from the wood duck and teal. drop a head cement. I'm going to do a small drop on each side. And that's just to hold that wood duck, teal, and jungle cock in place. I'm going to put a little bit extra, but I'm putting it on this front side here. It's still going to soak into the other side, but the majority will stay more towards the front. The goal in doing all of this is also to have a smaller head. All right, next thing we're going to do is our roof. This is our bronze mallard. This again has also got the uh, rackets left on there. Same thing, we're going to leave that rackets on there till the end.
<clears throat> All right, the bronze mallard roof. You see here. This one is actually tied reverse to the way we do it with everything else. Typically, what we would do with the other ones is this would be on the back side. Well, for this one, this will be on the front side. See how it's got that curvature to it? You want that. You want that to sit right there. See how it's got its nice natural curvature? You're going to use that to your advantage when tying this in. First, you got to get rid of the stuff on the other side. This will not be used. Now, make sure you're, just like everything else, make sure your bronze mallard are both of equal size. If they're not, strip away anything that is excess. In this case, it looks like I've got about two barbs on one side that I've got to remove. Since they're on the top, I'm going to clip them away. Okay. Now we're going to take our roof, take our bronze mallards, and we're going to put them together also. We put them together just like this. See the way the tops play outward from each other? Put them together just like so. Tip to tip. do it off camera since my uh, camera apparatus is kind of getting in the way here. All right, there we go. All right, so I've got these lined up now. And if you look again, it kind of makes that little bit of a boat if you tuck it between your fingers like that. That's what you want. You want to take that and you're just going to tuck that right over the top of the fly. And then kick those, kick these ends to each side. And then just take your time figuring out how long you want it to be and making your adjustments. I like that. That looks good. Once you're happy with that, with where you have it, make sure you have ample wax on your thread this time, which I did not. And I'm also going to clip away just the ends on the teal and wood duck just so they don't wind up getting caught up. Okay, so I just made a mistake and ac accidentally moved this the wrong way. And again, that's why leaving that rackets on there is important. So that way you can actually take it and put it back into shape. Otherwise, if I had done that, that would have been the end of it. Trying to get that to marry back up again and go back together would be... I'm sure many of you know Bronze Mallard is... Well, most call it a nemesis. Let's see if I can do this down here. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got it back on there. And then we'll just adjust until it's sorry. Do one loose wrap over the top and just let the bobbin hang and very gently with the weight of that do one more. Don't pull it tight, gentle wraps. I need to make a small adjustment with the front one. So I gotta come back off it. Again, let the bobbin hang, plus one. Here's our roof. Now once the fly's tied, once we're, everything's all said and done, we'll go through and we'll pick these out. Just use your dubbing needle to bring them down a little bit back into view. But for now, here we go. Again, another drop of head cement. I recommend these steps that it very much helps keeping things in place. This also could build up a little bit bigger of a head than you'd like, but for starting off, and you're first learning, this is a great way to do it. And we'll let that dry good. And while that dries, I'm going to put on the cheek. Um, the pattern typically calls for a Indian crow feather, but Indian crow is expensive and hard to come by these days. It's a red ruffed fruit crow, it's, which are also a protected species. So these are the nape of a uh, golden pheasant crest. Um, you find them on the back side of your golden pheasant right there. cheek some green highlanders have it some don't um, I really wanted to try to provide an authentic look for you guys um, as much as possible anyway I don't know if these are going to work as well as I hoped we're gonna go and tie that in one loose wrap And then the same on the other side. Now with this one, I'm not removing anything. I'm not removing any of the fluff. I'm not removing any of the, uh, any of the rackets. I'm just tying that right in as is. Now if you can do it, hold on to this and go back from the other one so that way you're tying both in at the same time. That'll save you on thread wraps. Now that the cheek is in, we'll move on to the last packet. And that is your topping and your horns. This is a golden pheasant crest, once again and blue and gold macaw horns. 
which is just uh, one tail fiber from each side of a blue and gold macaw. So we're going to tie in the crest first, the topping. Now as you can see, it's not quite the shape of the fly. But what you can do is you can get some of that to spread out by draping it over the tip of the wing, like that. But you can also manipulate it with your thumbnail, which we're going to do. So first remove any fluff or inner feather that might be in there. Leave most of this for now. And to get the shape you want, measure your length to about your tie-in point. And use your tweezers to hold it. And then your fingernail. And you're going to bend that. And by doing that, you're creating a little flat spot, a little tie-in point for your thread. We'll get that on there. Now that seems a little bit steep in the front here. So I like having that kind of nice little forehead here, if you want to call it. I don't know what to call it really. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to tie it in and see how it looks. This could take a couple of times, take a little bit of an adjustment, so be patient on this one. Get that tied in there. Now I'm just letting the bobbin hang with one thread. Barely one wrap. Makes it easy to move it around and figure out the orientation of it. All right, so that's still from what I'm thinking, a little too long. Okay. Not by much. So we'll take it back off. And we'll bend a little more from the last spot. You can also very gently go across the back up here like this. And that'll do the same thing and splay some of those um, fibers out. By doing that, we're kind of shaping, we're fitting the topping to the wing. Again, just loosely wrap that back in there. Still seems a hair long. Again, one more adjustment. And there we go. Now we're starting to see more of the shape that I'm looking for.
happenings can be finicky. They're probably the worst ones to deal with on the fly, on the fly. So now we're having, that's the right length, so we can go ahead and pull some of this crub off of here that's getting in the way. But I want to fill in some of that down here. Issue I'm running into here is right here. See where that's all tied in, and there's a hard edge right there from the feather and that uh, head cement that I put in there. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to trim this right off. I always have a box of these razor blades so you can very gently just cut right through all of that you hold the wing hold everything in place over here and then very gently cut through when you get down closer towards the eye you can start using a pair of scissors if you like just to not cut the eye up You can cut that off before or after. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, in this case, it kind of fought me a little bit, so. Okay. Now. Yeah, now I can, now I can position how I want. much easier. I'm not calling this a total fail, but it's getting there.
I like that. Actually going to wax this one more time. My wax doesn't seem to be. I don't think I had it on both sides of the thread. If you're, if you're new to salmon flies or spay flies or uh, presentation flies of any kind, um, if you don't use cobbler's wax, I do highly recommend it. Um, it's something that I use on just about every fly. Um, as you can see throughout this whole video, it's been a pretty important part of it. Oh, all right, now we've got that on. We'll move on to the horns. These are the blue and gold macaw horns. I like to line those up just enough that they crisscross over the top of the fly. Make sure you've got wax on your thread, especially for these. Now you want to tie them in. You can see it's blue towards the tip and yellow at the bottom with the blue riding along the top. That's how you want to tie them in. Make sure you've got your left and your right correct. If you're looking at it and it looks like this where it's all yellow, that's the inside. So now you take the other one, cross that over the top, about the same spot. And if you can backtrack that one wind of thread uh, so they're both tied in on the same one, that'll make things better for you. And then we can just adjust that a little bit. There's our horns. Now we're going to go in with some more head cement. A little heavier, but drop it in the front. Don't drop it on the on the roof. Drop it right on the front so that way it gets into all of this down here. that dry okay now we've let the head cement soak in just a little bit giving it a chance to solidify so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more and what we're gonna do now is finish up the head sharp razor blade is always a good thing to have on hand I buy a box of them on uh, eBay I think they're I don't know, six or eight bucks for a hundred of them. So I'm going to pinch the fly right around the body nice and tight. And get as close to the thread as you can. Do not cut your thread. And remember, this is, uh, this, this eye is also delicate. So don't cut too deep and cut into the eye material.
See right there, I already did. some thread and just start building up this spot right here. Start slipping a little bit, add a little bit more wax. That is pretty f ugly looking. I'll be honest. I had a lot of thread that slipped. It was un unwaxed. See, it's all coming off now. So here's a quick lesson in thread and wax and head building. Which I must say is not my strong suit. The idea is to keep the head as small as possible, not make some giant monstrosity like I was building. to build a head out of varnish as well. We just want this to be sturdy. Alright, I'm going to whip finish that. Put a layer of head cement again. We've already got some head cement on there, so it's not going to soak in quite as much now. that set up for a minute. And when we do that, we'll just go through the fly and start making some adjustments. I'm 
Let's grab our wood duck and teal. Bring that down a little bit. Adjust the rear wing. Topping. Now for the hackle, slap and hackle for the most part will have this real nice thick throat that you can kind of pull back a bit. Sometimes it doesn't like to pull back completely. So I actually just use a very, very light touch of dubbing wax, just uh, hairlines touch dub. You can lay a very, very, very little bit on your fingers. And that'll give you a nice little bit of a wetter sweeping back motion. Pull those hackle fibers back and keep them to keep them back there. <clears throat> now that that head cement is soaked in for a few minutes. We'll take out our black lacquer, which is just a wopsy black lacquer. Very gently, a small drop at a time, add it to the head of the fly. This stuff does settle and level out, and some will soak in, and um, some, of it, some of it will evaporate as well, so you just got to be, oh, dang. Helps to kind of turn the fly a few times as it's soaking in. See, you start getting a like a lump down here from all the, the lacquer starts settling down. And I'm gonna go ahead and do another coat of lacquer on that later on tonight. But there is our finished green Highlander tied with the Highlander kit. Hope you enjoyed that video. If, uh, if you did, give it a like, uh, hopefully subscribe. Um, I'll be making a lot more content for you guys. And um, as always, tight lines. <laughs>